Hey, what's up guys? Sean here. So this week we're going to switch gears a little bit. This week we're going to talk about get home bags. Let's get it. So love it or hate it, get home bags is a topic that often comes up in discussion. Um, it's a big topic for survivalists, um, preppers, that sort of thing. And kind of that's the side that I get into. So I'm a, what I would consider maybe a baby prepper. Um, not super uh, prepper where, you know, we don't have a bunker in the backyard sort of thing or anything like that. But I do carry a get home bag. And over the years, there have been many iterations of my get home bag. And lately, I have seen a lot of folks talking about get-home bags, and in particular, um, that their get-home bags are really heavy. Why is my get-home bag so heavy? Why, how can I get the weight down? We're going to talk about that today. So first off, let's talk about why I think your get-home bags are so heavy. People tend to, in my opinion, um, mix up the get home bag, um, bug out bag, inch bag thing, and they just pack for every eventuality, which is not what a get home bag is for. A get home bag is for uh, quick travel. It's to get home as fast as you can and have the things in that bag that will facilitate that. Now, having said that, where do you draw that line? Um, in my opinion, I would say a get home bag and a 72 hour bag are very similar. Um, and it's all going to depend on your amount of travel. Myself, I know that at any point in time in the day, I can be up to 80 or 100 miles from home, depending on how far I have to travel for work that day. And that is a long way, for me especially, to have to travel on foot. And uh, so I kind of plan for that, give or take. But uh, I think 80 to 100 miles is on the extreme end of it for most of us. Most of us are going to be in that, you know, 30 miles or less um, from work to home. But if you know for a fact that you travel much more than that, you need to plan for that with your get home bag. So I'm not going to get super in depth into it, but let's just lay out the differences real quick. Okay, so an inch bag, I'm never coming home. That's something that's going to be tool heavy in my opinion. That is worst case scenario, you have to leave because of World War Three has broken out or you know, whatever kind of craziness that you can think of where you would have to leave your property and never come home. That bag would be enormous, in my opinion. And in that case, you're probably in a lot of trouble anyway. But that's a topic for another video, because we could get into caches and all kind of other things that you really should be setting up if that's a scenario that you're worried about. But let's say you have a 72 hour bag a 72 hour bag just means that you need to be able to split for 72 hours grab that bag and go so it needs to have your essentials in it a shelter it needs to have a way to procure water it needs to have a way to get a fire um a cutting implement um and some food so and that's just a rough way to look at it. So it's a 72 hour bag. It's what a lot of folks would consider inconvenient camping. So you had to just take off for 72 hours and uh, you're gonna have to rough it. That's just the way it is. That's similar to the way I would pack a get home bag. So if you're 30 miles or so from home you're going to cover that 30 miles probably most folks are going to cover that 30 miles more than likely in two days two and a half days at the most because you got to think about this 
you are not camping. You will not be uh, setting up a leisure campsite where you're going to be, you know, setting up all your gear and having a comfortable sleep for eight hours. That's not likely to happen. For one thing, your adrenaline is going to be high because if you need to use that get home bag, there's a reason for stress levels to be high. And uh, so you're not going to get a comfortable eight hours of sleep. It's just not going to happen. You're going to get a few cat naps in here and there, and you're going to be traveling. So, or at least I would hope that if you have family or somebody at home that's waiting on you um, or something like that, I would hope that you would be hustling to try to get home as fast as possible. So a lot of folks set their get home bags up like they're camping. And the reality is you're just not going to be camping. It's not going to be a comfortable campsite. You're going to hustle until you wear out. You're going to lay down. You're going to catch a cat nap and uh, try to recharge your batteries a little bit. May throw a little bit of food in you and you're going to get back on the road. That's going to be the deal. So the idea that you're going to have time to set up snares or you're going to have time to uh, sit down and cook a big meal and sit there and eat and have a big campfire and all this stuff, that's, that's really not um, what a get-home bag is for. Get-home bag is for fast travel and having what you need to get from A to B. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So we're going to go through my bag real quick because I want to talk about what I carry in my bag, how I have changed some things, and how you can go through your bag and get rid of some things and drop your weight. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to go ahead and say we will not be talking about personal protective equipment in this video. That is up to you. You do what you want to do carry what you want to carry or don't carry what you don't want to carry that's up to you we won't be covering that in this video so as far as the pack goes the pack is up to you you can do a ultralight pack like a backpacker or me i wanted something that was a little heavier duty um because i know that i'm in more of a rural area most of the time and i may have to throw this thing over a fence or something like that so I wanted something a little more rugged but I'm also a cheapskate so this is a cheaper Amazon pack that I got I think it was called a wolf warrior pack if I'm not mistaken if I can find the link to it I'll drop a link I have been happy with this pack um, I've carried it some not a ton but with the weight that I've got in it it's actually really comfortable so I've been pretty happy with this pack it doesn't have fancy YKK zippers or anything like that, but these zippers do work well and they feel good. Um, it has some molly webbing on the front of it. It has some uh, Velcro spots for morale patches if you're into that. Um, and it does have some shock cord on the front of it if you wanted to just throw a shirt or jacket or something across here. And it has some attachment points on it. So on the outside of it, the first thing we're going to get into is the little first aid kit. This is my ouch pouch. I keep this on the outside of it here. It's easily accessible. I don't have a ton of stuff in the ouch pouch. Um, I've got my little, um, I've got my little tourniquet in here. Um, some little band aids and dressings and gauze and boo boo stuff in here. Uh, there's some basitracin, uh, zinc oxide stuff in here. Um, not a ton because honestly I am not uh, trained to do a ton of that. So if I had medical equipment in there I wouldn't know how to use it anyway. So this is a typical little boo-boo kit essentially. Um, and that's another thing that's completely up to you if you have the medical training um, to correctly use some of that equipment and it's something you feel the need to carry by all means 
pack what you need. But we're going to go through today what I feel like is the minimum I needed um, to get me home. So on the other side of the pack over here, I just have a water bottle. Just a standard water bottle. All right. So this pack um, doesn't have the most comfortable straps. But because of the weight we're carrying, it's more than adequate. And uh, I do like this uh, yoke style um, straps on there. It actually fits me a lot better. Now this pack came with these on the front of it. I took one of them off. Um, but on this other one here, I have my headlamp for ease of access. And the other thing I have in there is my base plate compass. So along with that base plate compass, I carry in this, there's a hydration bladder area in this uh, pack and I don't use a hydration bladder. So in that pack or in that space, I have two maps and they're the maps that are most likely I would be in these areas. So Georgia and Florida. Um, and these are Rand McNally maps. They are uh, the, I don't remember what you call it. Anyway, they have the coating on there so I don't have to worry so much about them getting wet. And uh, so I carry these two maps in here because they're the ones that I would more than likely be in those areas to have to try to get back home. And then I've got my compass in here and my headlamp on the front. Now let's see what we got in the pack. In the front of the pack here, this is the very front pocket. So this is my, what I consider my tool bag. Um, because I do have some tools in here uh, for my trip home. Just in case, like I said, who knows what I'm going to get into. Um, because I am in rural areas most of the time. So in the front pocket, I have... Uh, this is a little bag with a mosquito bug net in it just for my head um, in case I needed it. There is a orange bandana here. I could use it for marking a trail or for flagging if I needed help, um, signaling, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, orange may or may not be a good idea, um, but it all depends on what's going on in that situation. So. If it's a situation where you're hiding from somebody, by all means, keep that packed away. So, I have in this front pocket a ferro rod that's hooked to a carabiner. And that just drops down in this uh, little pouch here. I've got it if I need it. And it's hooked to this so I can't accidentally lose it. So, also in this little pouch, I have if I can get it out of here. A little folder. A little pocket knife folder. Now we'll get into another pocket knife that I have that I'll be carrying with me that I almost always have on me. Um, if I don't have it in my pocket, it's in my vehicle. So uh, we'll get into that in just a second. But I've got a little folder on here. It's got just a couple little blades on it. And uh, so that is basically a backup knife so i've got a little fire kit in here and some emergency fire starters and in my fire kit i just simply have two mini bics a pocket bellows and i do have a bag of cotton uh, cotton balls and uh, i'm not a huge cotton ball fire guy i do like the idea of you knowing how to correctly build a fire and not needing that. But in a get home type situation where you are just trying to get a fire real quick, if you had to have one, which in my opinion, building a fire in a get home situation is probably a last resort. Um, but this would just be a quick way to get a small fire if you had to have one. Um, also in this front pocket, I have a tiny roll of duct tape. So just a little tiny roll of one inch duct tape, but you can see there's a good bit of duct tape on there. 
and that would be good for repairing gear, a uh, flame extender for your fire if you had to have it. You could also use it and make uh, little uh, butterfly bandages if you had to uh, the butterfly bandage up a wound. Um, I do have a little fishing kit in here um, because like I said, I know that I'm several days from home and I only keep enough food in here for probably two days, three days max. So if I had to, if it looked like it was going to take me a good bit longer, I could set a line out real quick. If I was by a river or something, um, I could set a line out and let it work for me while I was catching a nap or something. Um, but that's about as far as I would go with like traps or anything like that. Now, I do have some cordage in here. Now, a lot of people are going to use um, paracord, and that's completely fine. I just find that I can carry more uh, tarred mariner's line, and uh, I actually like the tarred mariner's line. So, I also carry a silcock key, and this is invaluable if you are in an urban environment. So, if, let's say, you are trying to sneak through town, whatever, and you need water, a lot of the outside taps on commercial buildings aren't going to have a spigot handle. Um, they'll have one of these on it somewhere and you can use this thing to uh, Access water from those places and uh, Get some water for your trip so that it's not very expensive and it's a great thing to have in your kit I'll Set that off to the side um, Now this This could come out of my kit really but this is another one of those things where I'm packing my fears. Um, this is a SOS gear. Um, it is a chainsaw blade um, that you could use to cut limbs or something with. And like I said, that is one of those things that could come out of here because it's just packing my fears. But I've got it. It doesn't weigh a ton. It doesn't take up a lot of room. So whatever I got it. Um, now fixed blade knives <clears throat> I wanted a fixed blade knife in here that I could count on and that uh, I wasn't going to miss if I just stuck it away in this bag so I got this knife here and I think I got this from the flea market if I'm not mistaken and I need to clean it up a little bit. Looks like it's developing some surface rust on there. It is a carbon steel blade, but this is my little uh, my little knife that I would have um, if I was hiking home. It could be considered for you know combat knife, or I could use it as just a fixed blade to you know baton some wood if I had to or whatever. And then also in there I have a sharpener. So that's my that's my knife. Um, you carry whatever knife you want. If you want to carry a super expensive knife in your kit, that's completely fine with me. This knife here will do the job. And uh, if I lost it, I wouldn't be heartbroken about it. And that's kind of how I was looking at it too. Um, if I had to leave it behind for whatever reason, it wouldn't break my heart. Now, the last thing I've got in this kit here, or in this pocket here, is uh, something that a lot of people would look over and not necessarily um, carry with them. And I guess this is another one of those packing my fears things, but I have a small pouch with some fairly inexpensive 16 by 32 uh, binoculars in it and um, you know that's kind of that's one of those things that's up to you you don't have to have something like that but I like the idea of being able to um, if I'm coming into an area that looks a little sketchy I like the idea of being able to sit back 
and observe it before I head into it. And uh, that's just my opinion. That's just, you know, something that I want to do. And uh, so that's up to you. You can do what you want to do. Like I said, this is just the way I have mine set up. So that's my front pouch on there. That covers most of the tools and things like that that I would need. Now next up, we're gonna talk about my food pocket. So not a whole lot in here to talk about, but uh, we'll go ahead and grab it out of here and uh, look it over real quick. And then you can make your own decision on what you wanna carry. So in here, I have a pouch that has several packs of coffee in it which is something that I need guaranteed so I need to have my coffee and then also in this pouch I have some of my little uh, drink element um, pouches and that you know if I'm on the road and I'm really hustling like that I'm gonna need to get that salt and stuff back into me so those little pouches are really gonna help me out plus they're flavored and they taste pretty good so that will help make some of the water, if it's kind of a questionable area you're having to get water from, a little more palatable. So that's my little drink mixes. Now, I carry a few of these uh, tuna pouches in here. And these, like there's a hickory smoke one in there and there's a couple of uh, spicy Thai chilies. I really like those and they're super simple. And like I said, they don't take up much room or anything in the pack. And you could just open it up real quick, scoop it out and eat it. And you can just keep going if you need a bite. Um, so those are really simple. But another good option for that is going to be some of your uh, bar type foods. Laura bars, um, cliff bars, that sort of thing. And uh, those pack a lot of calories and a lot of energy in a small package and you can just eat them while you're going that's a great option um, I do typically have some Laura bars in here but I snacked out of here um, for lunch one day and I didn't replace it that's a bad idea um, but I was in a place where I couldn't get any food so I actually dipped into this and I should have replaced it and that's a that like I said that's a bad idea um, the other thing that I have in here that is very, very simple, um, that has uh, some calories in it, it will fill you up, um, and it's super simple to, to make and eat, is these Idahoan mashed potatoes. And I have three packs of mashed potatoes in here, um, which you could split these up if you wanted to into smaller portions or I have actually heated water up and just mixed it all up inside the bag here and eaten them straight out of there. So like I said there's only what is there um, there's 440 calories per pack so it's not a ton but that would would help you out get you some energy boost going now something else I would add to these add to your pack if you're gonna get the mashed potatoes is a little thing of brown gravy and what you can do is you take your great or your mashed potatoes you mix them up and you take a little bit of this powder just tear a corner off of it take a little bit of this powder and mix it in with the mashed potatoes and it'll make the gravy inside the mashed potatoes it's not the same but it gives you sort of that hint of flavor and it definitely makes these go down a little bit easier so that's a simple um just some small things that i have in my pack for food and just along the lines of food I have the Yuko utensils here that has the knife, the fork, and the spoon together. So it doesn't weigh much, doesn't take up much room. And uh, so that's, a, that's my food for a few days on the move. Um, like I said, I don't think that you're going to have time or have the time that you think you're going to have to sit down and make a bunch of food and eat a bunch of food I think you'll find that you're gonna be hustling and on the move um, so like these mashed potatoes and stuff like that 
the mashed potatoes is probably going to be the longest you're going to wait to make food, in my opinion. I could be completely wrong in your situation, but I think for me, that's going to be my easiest deal besides the bars. Now, I do need to get some uh, Laura bars or something to go in there because those don't weigh much. They're pretty good. I like them, and uh, they're easy to eat. Okay, so last up, we're going to talk about shelter, clothes, and that sort of thing. And this is where a lot of things that I have done have changed. So used to, I carried a hammock in this bag. Um, I carried an extra pair of pants in here. You, just a ton of different stuff. And now, something else that I want you to go ahead and think about too is the season you're in. So right now we are heading into fall. Temperatures are going to be cooling down a little bit. So you'll need to adjust your pack for the season. So as you come into spring, into summer, you don't need that big heavy sleeping bag. You don't need all this other stuff that you may need um, during the winter time. But as we're going into fall, we're going to start changing things up and maybe putting a little bit warmer stuff in here. But right now, I'll show you what I have in here. Um, and like I said, I have changed some things up. So in the past, I had the hammock in here. I had a pillow in here. Um, just all kind of craziness. And over time, thinking about, you know, the fact that I'm not going to be setting up a big elaborate campsite and all that stuff. I don't need all that stuff. And all that extra stuff equals weight. And all the extra weight that you're carrying on your back means you can't go as far or as fast as you will with a lighter setup. Now, I know somebody's going to say, oh, well, you're a big guy. You're fat. You're not going to be able to travel very far anyway. You'd be surprised. In an emergency situation, you're going to cover more ground than you typically would. Granted, I probably, probably won't be able to cover as much ground as a lot of you folks. But I'm gonna cover the ground anyway, and so I wanna carry a smaller pack. And just because I'm big doesn't mean I don't need to be prepared. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up real quick and see what we have in here for shelter and things like that. So this is the last bag, or the last pocket. So first up in here, I have a my water filter kit. So, um, you'll notice that I don't have like a giant water canteen or anything on here. And that's because I don't want to have to stop and build a fire or something like that to get water. I know that's, if that's your thing, that's completely fine. Um, but I have a water filter kit here that I can set up, filter water, drink, and then refilter water and put it in here and be gone in just a few minutes. So I like that better. Plus, I'm not leaving a signature as far as like a smoke signature. Um, another thing that, that people don't realize is fire smells. The smell of smoke, even if someone can't see the fire, a lot of times you can smell a campfire. And uh, that's another signature that you don't need to be putting out there if you're kind of trying to be stealthy and lay low. So that's why I like my water filter. Um, it's a very simple little kit. It's the uh, Sawyer, uh, this is the Sawyer Mini, I think. The little Sawyer Mini. Um, I have the knock bag. This is a, I believe this is a two liter knock bag. And then I have the, um, the hose that goes with it that just makes it easier to hang it and refill this uh, bottle. So. <clears throat> that's my water filter kit. I used to, I did carry the stainless steel water bottle and all that stuff, but I realized that that was extra weight I didn't need to carry. I could carry one of these little water bottles in my little water filter kit, and uh, I'm good to go there. So, like I said, you do what you want to do. This is just a way for me to lighten the pack a little bit and uh, not not have to build a fire to get clean water. Now, another thing you could do is you can carry the little 
um, aqua mirror tabs or the aqua tabs or whatever to treat your water. The problem with those is you have to get your water and let the water soak for 30 minutes before you can drink it. I like the filter idea better because I can drink it. I can literally, if I had to, I could just dip the water in this bottle, screw the filter on it, and drink it right out of the bottle. So I like that. It's just a little quicker and a little more convenient for me. <clears throat> now, along with this, I do have my little cook kit. Now, this cook kit has recently changed. Um, I had just a little, uh, the Walmart cup that I was using, but because I'm getting ready to go on that backpacking trip, I just got a lighter setup for that. So this cook kit has gone into this pack now. So I've got the stainless steel cup with the lid. And inside this cup with the lid, I have a bandana for one thing. That bandana is good for a couple things. It helps you pick the cup up if it gets hot. Say you do have to build a fire. Um, it'll help you there. Helps you clean up. You can wipe yourself down with it. You can dry your hands, all that sort of thing. Now I've got this little Esbit stove. And inside this, it has four tabs. So that's four times I can boil water um, with this, this little Esbit stove. And uh, in all reality, that would be probably enough to get me home. Um, I could add a few more of these to the kit, and it wouldn't add that much more weight to it. But uh, that's a handy little thing. And again, when you're talking about noise signature, um, this is lighter than a gas canister with a little gas stove, and it doesn't make that sound that a gas stove makes. And uh, if, you, if you've ever been in camp with a group of people and got up before everybody else and decided you wanted coffee and all you've got is your little gas stove, you know that gas stove is loud. Uh, when nobody else is awake yet. So that's my little uh, cook kit there. I can boil water to um, make some mashed potatoes with that and uh, gives me something to drink my coffee in and that sort of thing. So that's pretty simple. Simple little kit there. I'm a kit guy. If you've watched any of the videos, you know that I like kits that's a problem that I have, and I understand. So, and here is my ditty bag. So I've got my little ditty bag here. Inside the ditty bag, I have, for one thing, this is a charging cable for my battery that I kind of also stole out of here that I need to add back um, that I haven't put in here yet. But um, I know. I know, I hear you. That's bad. But in here, I have some uh, little Kleenex wipes. Um, obviously, you could, might know what that's for. Um, if you're a big guy like me and you're not used to hiking long distances, uh, some Gold Bond is a good thing to have. Um, now, I have a big bottle, or I say big, a bigger bottle of hand sanitizer. Now, they have the little keychain bottles of hand sanitizer, but this right here is good for keep you know cleaning your hands and stuff like that. But you can also use this in conjunction with those cotton balls to help get a fire started if you had to have it. So we got a little bit bigger bottle there just in case. I have some Repel Bug Wipes in here. Um, and then I also have some dude wipes. So for me, being able to, you know, wipe myself down sometimes is going to help me not chafe. Um, I'm a big guy. It's just a fact of life. So this is pretty light, doesn't take up much room. And in the grand scheme of things, this in conjunction with this would definitely help me be able to cover more ground for longer. And I know that for a fact, so it is what it is. Um, also in here, I have some 
uh, gold bond the uh, healing aloe just in case I got a burn or anything like that that would help out um, see, I also have some lip balm here that's good for your lips it's good it, again if you get a little abrasion or a cut or something you can put on there and, and help seal it up um, also like to keep or repair your pack and things like that I have a little assortment of safety pins um, I also have some fingernail clippers and those come in really handy um, not just for clipping your fingernails if you get a hangnail um, anything like that if you're hiking for long distances and you're not used to it it could easily turn into a ingrown toenail and create some pain when you're walking so those could really help um, I also carry an assortment of little plastic Ziploc bags they come in really handy you never know when you're gonna need one you could carry water in this thing if you absolutely had to um, just all sorts of uses for these and like I said it doesn't take up much room so I've got those in there and the other thing I have is this emergency rain poncho now this is just a backup to my regular poncho this is not the one that I would always carry or always use but just in case I could take this thing and use it for an emergency it's what it's you know it's an emergency poncho so that is going to pretty much cover what's in the um, possible pouch. So again, like I said, I've got my poncho. Now this poncho is a heavy duty poncho. And uh, the reason I decided to carry this poncho, it's a little heavier than my other poncho, but this has multiple uses. So because I don't have the hammock, I will be relying on sleeping on the ground when I get some sleep. So this will not only be a poncho, this will be a ground cover for me to lay on. So I've got that to lay on. I have my gold armor tarp. Now this I believe is seven by eight, if I'm not mistaken, uh, gold armor tarp. And in here I have the stakes for it and a ridge line and the tie outs and everything in there. So that would cover me and this is my ground cloth. So I'm pretty good on that. And in here, I have just a little fleece sleeping bag. And the funny thing is sleeping bags are hard for me because I'm such a big guy. I feel like I'm a sausage scrunched up in a sleeping bag. But this sleeping bag actually fits me. It doesn't take up a lot of room and actually it's really warm and it's really inexpensive so uh, I pay this is a uh, I don't even know the brand a Stan Sport uh, fleece sleeping bag and uh, I paid like $15 for this thing so that was a, a good deal I felt and so if I had to have it I could set my tarp up with my ground mat and my little sleeping pad and I could fill one of these little bags up with leaves or something for a pillow and I'd be okay to catch a cat nap and uh, that would keep me out of the rain too if I had to so like I said typically I'm not going to be setting up a um, camp but if I had to I've got the stuff here to set up a quick camp and be able to get some sleep so the only other thing I have in this pack is a spare pair of underwear, a spare pair of socks, and a beanie. Just in case it gets cold and I need to keep my head warm, I've got a little beanie here. So that is a simple get home bag set up. And uh, this is something that I'm carrying now. Um, like I said, I used to pack my fears. I used to have all sorts of things in here. Um, hatchets, um, silky saws, and all that stuff. So, speaking of saws, in my pocket, the, the knife that I almost always carry 
is my little Victorinox Ranger Grip. And this is my almost my everyday carry. So I don't typically have an everyday carry knife. It kind of just depends on what my mood is. But this has become more of my everyday carry. And it's always in my vehicle. So if I knew I had to leave, I would absolutely grab this knife. Um, and it does have a saw blade on there. It's got my regular good lock blade on there. Plus it has the toothpick on there where you could dig at splinters and things like that. And then it has your tweezers on here. So there's a lot of good options in this. It has I've got the one that has the Phillips screwdriver on it instead of the uh, corkscrew because I don't think I'm going to be able to use the wine to facilitate my getting home. So anyway, um, that's why I've got this little Ranger grip. So that's my other knife that I carry. So that actually gives me three blades, which is a little overkill. But this one stays in my pocket. It's not on my back. Um, that's how I justify that. So that's it. That's fairly simple. That is my get home bag. In its current state, my get home bag is just over 15 and a half pounds. So I've seen a lot of people say, oh, I can't get my get home bag under 20 pounds. Um, I understand that you want to pack for every contingency. And I understand that. Just remember that every extra pound that you add to this pack is more time and more energy it's going to take for you to get home. And ultimately, you just want to get home as fast as possible with a get home bag. That's the point. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it that big thumbs up for me. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down there for me. Hit that notification bell so you get notified next time we put out a video. You can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next week.